Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dye and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, thank you so much for receiving my latest episode so well. Um, I was really happy to record another knitting related episode recently and You've all given it such a warm welcome and if you found me through this uh, last episode, uh, welcome back and if this is the first time watching, welcome. Um, I usually make these kind of preview videos, which this episode is going to be about, where I share with you what's coming and what I've been working on um, for the next yarn collection that will come out soon. Um, we're already in September, I can't believe that. I mean, this summer, it was a long summer feeling wise, but somehow this gap between, or the time between July and September went by so fast. And with the first slightly cooler days, we had a few warm days still in September, like very warm ones. But with the first cooler days, I was really getting into the mood for fall and autumn, like I said in my, um, previous knitting episode and I got in the, into the mood for all kinds of fall activities and um, you know all kinds of things around pumpkins and um, yeah walks in the woods and all kinds of knitting projects as well and after you know I put together all the uh, colorways for this collection and because the collections do take a couple of weeks to be dyed usually um, I only see them all together once I prepare this preview episode and I realize how fall inspired I seem to have been while dyeing these shades. So this is going to be a really autumnal and um, yeah, typical autumn color uh, collection, I would say. Um, and I actually love that and I can't wait to cast on a couple of projects myself in some autumnal colors because this year I really feel like, you know, all the browns and rusts and yeah, maybe even a, like a mustardy yellow or so. So yeah, I personally enjoy it a lot and I really hope you will too. And so in this video, I'm going to show uh, everything that we've prepared for the September collection. Um, there will be a couple of different bases that I will introduce at the beginning of this video, um, followed by the colorways that I will show you that we've dyed and also a little special um, that I'm so excited to finally spill the tea on because um, yeah, some of you might know already um, that we uh, we started releasing our own uh, custom spun sock yarn Ovis that has been in the making for quite a while and uh, to celebrate this launch we are having a monthly sock box um, from August to November this year each will feature uh, a dedicated design by um, different designers that were that were um, using Ovis in their designs. And we will have different bits and bobs from other makers that have contributed something to the boxes. And um, I will introduce the September box and its contents for the first time in, at the end of this video. And so I hope you're going to be excited about this one. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the September collection. Um, the date of the September collection is next Friday, 29th of September at 8 p.m. CET. So that is just the um, mid-European time zone. Um, and I will put reminders and everything on my Instagram. So in case you need a little info um, and could need a little help with time zones and such, I'm going to pop that onto my Instagram. and. This update is going to be a really, really special one because it's the first one after our um, summer vacation and it's been a long time in the making. So I really, really hope you're going to love it as much as I do. Um, in this update, we will have, of course, over sock, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, and we will have a little restock of our cloud silk mohair, which is our ethically sourced, sustainably produced uh, silk mohair yarn but only in a few colorways. 
Um, then we'll have a few shades of Shetland Romney 4 ply, but only just a few, um, because we actually designed these to feature another yarn that's making a comeback. And I'm especially happy about this announcement because it has been in the making for a while. And last time we had this yarn, it was incredibly well received, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, so I tried to um, make more of it. And that one is our Shetland um, Welsh Mountain base um, that we used to carry in a four ply weight only uh, last year. No, not last year. I think it was beginning of 2023. Um, but this time we're even going to have another weight and I'm going to share more about it um, later on in the video. But so far about the base overview, um, I think because we have quite a few bases and quite a few colorways, let me jump right into showing you the colorways, starting with Overstock. As a little reminder, Overstock is our um, custom spun um, sock yarn that we released last month, and it is a 375 meters per 100 grams, um, and it's a blend of 50% Jacob sheep and 50% Chiviet sheep. Um, blended at different percentages um, with different colorways or fleece shades um, resulting in the two natural colors, the gray and the ecru. Um, and it's really fun to dye on this because we have, you know, it's a bit of a different canvas every time. Um, and with Ovis, um, it has been spun to a slightly higher twist for durability because it's a non super wash and no nylon stock yarn that still needed to be, you know, sturdy enough for me to pass my quality testing. <laughs> um, and I still owe you a whole video about this, the making of this yarn and the whole base. And I promise I'm going to record that as soon as I can. Um, but I still want to recap a few more pairs of socks and a few more things where I can, you know, then sum up everything in a big informational video and also share my tips and tricks about sock knitting without um, artificial fibers in the yarn. So stay tuned for that video. I'm going to record that as soon as I can. But until then, um, yeah, Ovis is our custom spun sock base and it's wonderful. It's warm and woolly and I absolutely love it. So um, without further ado, let me show you the colorways on Overstock. So for the restock of Orvis, um, we are going to uh, have the two undyed shades available. And those are, this is the undyed Ecru and we'll also have the undyed Grey. Um, these are just the natural shades this uh, yarn comes in and they will be um, available in a limited quantity just because I think it's always great to have them for like a base color if you want to do like a color work or just need a little bit of a white contrast to something. Um, this can be very helpful I guess. So these are the two undyed shades of Ovis and with the dyed ones um, we have quite a few <laughs> shades so Bear with me if I um, jump through these a little bit more quickly because I hope, yeah, I just hope it's not gonna uh, take too long. Um, so first of all, uh, we're gonna have a few lighter shades um, and I'm gonna show these first because they're kind of out of the range. The rest is pretty muted and pretty um, earthy. So this one is Apricot and it is a light apricot orange shade that I think is very beautiful as a contrast with one of the um, darker more earthy shades I'm going to show it to you later and this one is mist and mist is something between a green and a gray and I'm not sure if the camera picks it up properly but it is um, a one-of-a-kind shade, but I still thought, because we have a few one-of-a-kinds in this update, I thought it's nicer to um, still name them, because I guess it's a bit easier to shop um, colorways by name than by just, you know, numbering the one-of-a-kind colorways through, so I just thought it might be easier this way. So Apricot and Mist. Next up, we're gonna have a range of like golden, um, golden greeny, yellow shades, um, starting off with Lichen, 
lichen is a light green yellow mustard as if you would you know take out the saturation out of a yellowy mustard this is what would come out of it and it's just a beautiful shade next up we're gonna have fern and this one is an even more saturated dark um, how do you say saturated um, greenish yellow almost like a chartreuse I guess so this one is fern I'm not sure why we're having such focusing issues right now but I hope it's gonna fix soon so this one is fern and next up we're gonna have brass which is another deep um, yellowy mustardy green not sure if the camera picks it up though it's really tricky to pick up um, and if it wants to focus so this one is brass and just to compare them these are the three shades. So this is lichen, in the middle we have fern, and then we have brass. And I think they're just all really autumnal and beautiful. I hope the camera picks the colorways up properly. Um, but yeah, so far about those. Um, then we'll have a couple of more, let's say, earthy shades, and these are just my complete favorites. Um, so let me start out by holding them up next to each other um so yeah these are all our earthy shades for this update starting with the colorway hazel this one was launched for the first time um with our linen yarn uh, earlier this summer and it's like a muted warm orangey beige Next up, we're gonna have maroon, and maroon is like a very reddish, almost berry like brown. It has a bit of variegation throughout, which I also really like. So, this one is maroon. Next up, we'll have chestnut and this is like a saturated beautifully golden orangey brown with a bit of variegation in it as well sorry the light keeps changing today because we have one of those days where there's like a lot of fluffy clouds and it's going back and forth with the sun and it's just i hope it's gonna be okay <laughs> i'm still working out this whole space and i you know, I haven't found the perfect way to film here yet, but it's gonna be fine. So chestnut, oh yeah, now you can see the colorway much better. This one is chestnut. And last but not least, we have woodlands, which is a dark, quite variegated grayish brown with some reddish parts. It's more like a multicolor almost, but not really, so it's more like a semi-solid colorway, I would maybe call it. And I think it's really beautiful. I can totally imagine like a sweater even in this one, to go out into the forest and, you know, forage for mushrooms potentially or so. So yeah, these are our um, kind of earthy, brownish shades um, and I think they're really nice and as mentioned before I think it would also be very beautiful to combine apricot with them let me see if I can hold it up um, as a bit of a you know a contrasty color work but with um, still a little bit of the warmth um, from like a an orange that would not be as stark white as like a real acro let me show for example um, so yeah it would be a bit softer uh, in contrast which I think is 
something I personally really like, so that's why I wanted to mention it. Um, and yes, I think, oh no, we have one more colorway, and um, the name might be a bit unusual for me, but you're gonna see why it's called this way later. So this one is the Luna colorway, and it is a light, almost pinkish beige, that I think is really pretty. And I'm gonna explain to you why it's called Luna in a bit. Um, this is that colorway and last but not least we're gonna have a colorway that I think really was inspired by the spooky season that's upon us. Um, I mean it's not a huge tradition here where I live. Halloween's not really a thing, like it's not, a, it's a thing but you can see that it has not been around for very long. Let me see, the light is changing again. Um, so it's not like an old tradition here, so um, I think people are not as crazy about Halloween as they are in other parts of this world, but um, I still wanted to have a little bit of a spooky colorway, and this is the one. It is moody and witchy and has all these different shades of purple and reds and greys, and it is called Witchcraft. So this is our kind of Halloween inspired colorway. Um, in case you need a little bit of a spooky sock with some different color effects. So this one is the last one of um, the regular Orvis uh, colorways. Um, there will be another one, uh, all connected to the September box, but let me first show you all the single skeins and then jump into everything about the September box uh, at the end of the video. So for our cloud silk mohair base, it's a traditional lace weight silk mohair yarn with um, 420 meters per 50 grams. Um, and it is a blend of uh, Seventy-two percent um, ethically sourced responsible mohair, and uh, twenty-eight percent peace silk or ahimsa silk, how it's called. So it's a cruelty-free silk where the silkworms have not been cooked alive. Um, and this one was custom spun for Woolen Twine Fiber Studio as well. So it's an exclusive yarn that we're carrying since last year, I think, or the beginning of this year. I don't a hundred percent remember correctly. <laughs> But, um, yeah, without further ado, let me share a couple of colorways with you. Um, some of them will be perfect to pair with others that we might have in the lineup uh, this time. And um, it pairs beautiful with Oversock, which we've just recently found out when my mom knitted um, a sample of the Lane of Hearts shawl. And I show that one in my podcast episode uh, that I recently released, so I'm going to link that here and um, the fabric this creates is absolutely wonderful. So I can really recommend um, pairing over sock with uh, cloud. Um, and others are just a bit more standout colors, so they're not necessarily designed to go with another color, though I think they would go with a couple of them. So I'm gonna try and show you a few examples. Um, first of all, uh, let me show you the, our colorway Oxalis which is a berry, like a bluish undertoned berry colorway. Um, and I think this is just beautiful and very autumnal. Um, then next up, we have the new colorway Chestnut on um, Cloud as well. And it turned out slightly more reddish than it did on um, on the Orvis. Let me show them side by side if I can. So yeah, here is the version on Orvis and here it is on Cloud. Um, I don't know if that's visible because the light is blowing it out slightly, but yeah, it's more of a rust, rusty orangey brown on the um, on Cloud Silk Mohair. So, next up, we're gonna have one that I just decided to call one of a kind this time because it's completely unrepeatable and 
it's I don't know it's really cool but this is the one of a kind and it's like a it's a mint it's a grayish mint but it has I don't know if you can see that but it has these um, almost purpley parts in the silk thread and I think this is just so unique it's almost like iridescent maybe I should have called it iridescent <laughs> but this is really really fascinating and it has been dyed with um, onion skins so red onion skins to be precise so you would really um, think that red onion skins would give this kind of color but they do um, I mean I do it depends always depends on what more was used and all these things and I was experimenting with that a little bit so I'm really happy with how it turned out and I actually think this could be quite fun with lichen um, I don't know what you think but I think with the grayish undertone of this one it would be quite a little bit of a greenish mauled effect potentially I don't know but I think it would be quite cool so yeah, this is the one of a kind. Um, wow, now the light is going crazy again. I hope it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, and I'm really happy with this colorway. I'm, I'm having a hard time not keeping some skeins for myself because I think it's really exciting. And it's not going to be repeatable as mentioned. So if you're into this kind of shade, then um, it's a good idea to purchase it um, now because I won't be making it again. Next up, um, we are going to have two kind of neutrals that I think would go with a lot of different shades. Um, and um, these are the Luna colorway, and this is actually the um, companion colorway to the Luna on Oversock. So they would go really well together. And this is actually the exact um, shade that my mum used for the Lanes of Hearts shawl that I showed in my latest episode. Um, let me grab that one. I think it's easier to show. <laughs> Just a second. So here is the Lanes of Hearts shawl Oops, that I've been talking about and I think it's just the fabric is so beautiful it's still unblocked so I'm sorry it's gonna be blocked soon but I was waiting to probably document the process so um, yeah didn't manage to do that yet but it's beautiful and I will also link um, the episode where I show this more in depth below um, but this is the exact same yarn combination that was used um, for this shawl um, and I think it's beautiful what would also work really well and this is uh, the other colorway that I wanted to show to you um, this one is a restock of our colorway Barley and it's um, a slightly more coolish beige that I think would re go really well with the Luna colorway still. Um, let me show them side by side. So this one is the Luna and this one is Barley and it's... Um, I don't know if you can tell but Barley is a bit more coolish in undertone because it was actually dyed to match our um, ballet uh, on Thrive Unspun, the colorway. So in case you've been looking for that one, uh, we are going to restock it. Um, so far so good. Um, I guess those were the colorways on Cloud Silk Mohair. Next up let me show you the colorways on Shetland Romney 4 ply. So our Shetland Romney um, for play base is another custom spun yarn that I created I think last year um, and it is a blend of 50% Shetland and 50% Romney sheep um, resulting in a beautiful palette of different natural colors um, and also give a nice canvas to dye on. Um, we will also have a few of the natural colorways but I think those are still in stock so if you want to check them out you can check them um, at the shop right now um, and we've dyed a beautiful um, autumnal collection on these let me try and show them to you kind of all together I don't know if you can see but it's a beautiful very autumnal palette and um, yeah it, it was designed to be very moody very autumnal and I think the inspiration really came through 
Okay, I'm currently restarting the section for like the third time because the light is going so crazy outside. <sighs> I'm honestly a little bit lost at how to film these videos properly without a lot of fuss um, at this new space. Um, so I kind of am considering how I can maybe change things up and because I don't think it's going to be very helpful for you either if it keeps just going up and down and um, I don't know. It's it's very it's it's upsetting me quite a bit right now. So if there are any experts that could help me out with, you know, um, consulting me with lighting situations and how I can recreate natural lighting somehow in like maybe an artificial environment, please hit me up because uh, this is just something that really stresses me out because I cannot, you know, I don't have a hundred of options um, on when I can film these kind of videos and um, yeah with the time that I, I have small time frames I have to film these in and then when it's like this and it's just not working out with the light it can be really stressful and I really hope that for this time it's gonna be okay for you but yeah I guess in the future to keep myself <laughs> from going insane I think I might need some help and change up some things with this because you know it's not really something I enjoy to do, um, you know, adjusting the settings all of the time, being afraid that you can't see the colorways properly, it's, it's difficult. Anyhow, let me speed through this section while the light seems to be kind of consistent. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show all colorways on uh, Shetland Romney once again. I think um, the intro was okay. So this one is Maple Leaf and it's like a rusty um, brown orange. Um, that I think would go really well with chestnut on the cloud silk mohair because it turned out quite a bit more reddish in undertone than it did on the obis. Next up we'll have our classic um, colorway caramel which is a golden warm brown. Then next up we'll have Oxalis, which is like a berry toned, um, deep reddish purple shade. <laughs> I don't hope I'm making sense. Next up we're gonna have the colorway Maroon on this base as well, which is like a reddish brown that I really like. Then we'll also have our colorway Elder, which we didn't have for quite a while, so I hope it's going to be nice to have this one back. Um, it's like a dark brownish berry, almost like a brown, but also with a bit of berry, so showing it next to Oxalis might show how much deeper and more brown it is. Um, and last but not least, we're going to have our colorway Golden Hour, which is um, just a beautiful mustardy, mustardy yellow. And this time it turned out a slight touch less saturated, but I think it's absolutely beautiful this way as well. So for this month's sock box, um, I am incredibly excited to announce this one. And you might have seen um, on my Instagram already where we already announced it, but the designer for this month's box is no other than the wonderful Melody Hoffman of Be Mandarines. And she contributed an absolutely beautiful design um, to the box. So without further ado, let me show it to you. So these are the Runa socks. Um, and they feature a beautiful colorwork motif uh, at the cuff, which uh, also has a few embroidered elements like this little star over here and um, yeah I think it's just absolutely wonderful and you know I could not be happier with how this turned out. The colorwork motif goes all around so um, these are the Runa socks and um, I you know when I approached Melody about this we were talking about the theme for the September box being kind of you know, fall inspired, but not like too typical crunchy leaves, um, mushroom foraging and all these things. 
but rather, you know, I kind of envisioned something like a whimsical cottage core type of vibe for this uh, box. And I think, I, you know, how could you translate that in a better way than Melody did with this pattern? Um, I could not be happier with it. And I'm so incredibly thankful that she used Orvis for this absolutely stunning design. And while it does look intricate to make, I think it's still very doable. I'm not even a very, you know, experienced color work knitter and I found it quite doable. And Melody has beautiful video tutorials for every step um, of the process, um, especially for the embroidery and the little bubble uh, section over here. I don't know if you can see, but yeah. She has, um, video tutorials for those so it's very easy to follow and um, it's gonna be lovely. So yeah, these are the Runa socks and we're going to have in the box for um, for the September sock box, we're going to have a sock set in the original colorways and this now is the explanation why. This shade is called Luna that we also have in full skeins because the colorways are called Runa which is the dark brown and Luna which is the light beige. So this is the sock set and uh, you will have enough to knit yourself a pair of Runa socks of course. Um, and I will also make these um, sets available individually so in case you're not getting a box you can still get the pattern um, and the, um, the sock set. Speaking of the pattern, the pattern will of course be included in the box as well as this set. So you will be good to go to knit the Runa socks um, as part of the September box. Um, but that's not all. I mean, <laughs> I've also teamed up with other wonderful makers um, who contributed something very beautiful to the September box. And without further ado, let me share them with you. So um, one of the contributors to um, the, the September box was Sophie of Under the Willow Pottery or Under the Willow Knits. I'm going to link all her info below. Um, she does pottery and she makes the most beautiful mugs and also wonderful stitch markers. And I was over the moon um, when she said yes and agreed on collaborating with me on uh, this little box project because, as mentioned, I was envisioning kind of a whimsical cottage core uh, gardening around a sweet little uh, woodlands cottage um, vibe and what would be better fitting than a stitch marker that is actually a little cottage and that is what Sophie made for the box. So these are the little cottage I don't know if you can see, yeah, this way. The little cottage stitch markers, and they are made from natural clay um, and fired in an oven. How do you focus camera? Okay. And these are just so beautiful. I think they, they fit the vibe so perfectly and they are just, you know, so adorable. Look at how tiny they are. I think they're so beautiful. And yeah, I think they really go very well with the socks. <laughs> so yeah, these little adorable, well, they are not stitch markers. I think I, I said it wrongly. It's like a progress keeper because they have these little uh, claspy things over here. So yeah, you can put them into your knitting. And actually, despite being real um, stoneware clay, they really aren't very heavy. So I was really surprised at how lightweight they are. So I don't really think it's gonna be a problem to put them into your knitting um, and have them, you know, tug on it or anything. I don't think they will um, weigh it down at all. So yeah, these are the beautiful little progress keepers from Sophie of Under the Willow Knits and Under the Willow Pottery. She has um, a, an account around her knitting projects as well, where she also designs very adorable knitting patterns. So definitely check that out. Um, 
her work is absolutely stunning and I could not be happier to have her on board. Um, last but not least, uh, the third um, contribution to the September box is by Donina and uh, she is um, she lives and works and creates in Poland and she works with natural dyes um, as well and dyes um, antique and vintage linen fabrics and makes these glorious little pouches uh, out of the naturally dyed fabrics um, and she uses a lot of different colorways so um, for the box it will actually be the case that um, each pouch is unique um, some even have these tiny little flowers on them um, so each pouch is unique and um, there will be one in your box and it will be a little bit of a surprise which I think is so exciting but uh, every color is um, you know there aren't a lot of bright colors or anything they are all very muted so I think yeah they are all just super beautiful and what's really cool about this is that Danina also uses um, uh, vintage zippers for this so um, the whole project was as with as little waste as possible so here it is if you can see but these are vintage zippers and she uses as little waste or she produces as little waste as possible which is right up my alley and mits uh, meets my ethics very well so I'm so happy and thankful to be able to work with such wonderful makers and you know uh, curating these boxes has been incredibly fun and um, I'm just so thankful for this opportunity and I want to send out a huge thank you and um, all the appreciation I can give to everyone contributing to the boxes because it's just something very magical and it's very enjoyable for me to work on this and you know putting them together is just absolutely wonderful so let me try and hold everything up so you can see the contents of the September box all in one frame so we have the pattern of the Runa Socks by Melody Hoffman of Be Mandarins, the Under the Willow Pottery um, Cottage Stitch Markers, if it wants to focus. Hello. And the beautiful naturally dyed uh, Notion Pouches by Danina. I actually owned one of those um, or I own one of those pouches and I've had them for I don't know how long but quite a while and I've been using it to store different things I have a few of them I even have two or three and I keep a lot of knitting bits and bobs in them and they are so small that they will easily fit your project bag with all your necessities um, and it's I think it's very very practical and I, I've been using them myself for a while before even approaching Danina again to make them for the boxes so I think they've been thoroughly tested and it's just beautiful. I could not be happier. You can see the whole earthy vibe is totally uh, present in this September box and I think the theme of whimsical cottage core was met quite well. So yeah, this is the September box um, and I'm just so glad. Um, some of you might know already how this box thing works, but I'm going to repeat everything again um, just so you know how it is. Um, so for those of you who are new to this whole uh, sock box thing, um, the sock box will cont uh, contain the yarn, uh, so the sock set in the Runa and the Luna colorway to knit the Runa socks. It will include the pattern and it will include uh, the little goodies I just showed you um, by the other wonderful what, 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 the other wonderful makers. Um, and yeah, it will all be wrapped beautifully so you can have a, a really enjoyable um, unboxing moment. I will do my very best to do that in a very nice way. And um, yeah, 
they will be very limited that's one thing i want to say and last time we had a few people who missed out i'm very sorry about that but it's also the first time i'm doing this kind of project and i didn't really know how how these boxes would have you know will be received so i kind of um you know amount wise it was difficult for me to predict um how well it would be received and i think um yeah if you would like to purchase a box um just make sure you're going to be on time for the shop update so um the collection will launch uh the box will launch with the september collection on the 29th um of september at 8 p.m cet and um yeah i just really hope you're gonna love um the box as much as i do um Another thank you to everyone who contributed to this. I could not be happier and I'm so glad to have you on board. Um, and for those of you who might like the pattern and the yarn, but not really the notions or the box are not really into the box uh, altogether, you can also purchase um, the sock set individually and the pattern will also be available individually um, with the whole launch. So whatever you prefer you should be able to get um, so far about the boxes if there are any questions let me know just one thing if you have a question please email me do not send me a dm or so it might be difficult for me to keep up in shop update week uh, with all my instagram dms so just do me a favor and email me at hello at woolentwine.com all my info is also linked down below um, but without further ado, let me jump into the last section of this uh, preview episode. So another base I want to talk to you about is the comeback of our Shetland Welsh Mountain yarn that we released earlier this year. And earlier this year, we only had the four ply version of it. And this time we also made a DK. And this is it. For those of you who are new here, um, Shetland Welsh Mountain is a natural black yarn that I curated um, with the help of my mill and fiber suppliers and uh, I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, there is quite a journey behind this yarn because, um, you know, creating a black yarn as a natural dyer with dyes is pretty tricky and very harsh on the fibers. and Blending different fiber types from sheep that are naturally black can result in quite a coarse and very, very rustic yarn because a lot of breeds that naturally have the, the dark black fleeces, they are kind of, um, you know, not the most um, soft breeds, let's put it that way. And so we were able to find this very rare blend of... Um, uh, not blend, but we curated this blend of um, Shetland and Welsh Mountain, uh, black Welsh Mountain sheep and black Sh Shetland sheep. And we blended them together into this beautiful um, yarn. And um, last time we had a batch spun and it was only the four ply weight. I have a whole video about this and showing some samples and I think I'm showing some samples even with the mohair and everything, so you can watch that. I will link it here and down below. Please, please, please watch that one because it contains all the info on this yarn and I think it might be very helpful to watch it. Um, but this time we decided to also get a DK weight spun. I don't know if you can see that, but it has the same dark color, um, just one more ply, so it's a bit heavier. And the four ply version is a 350 meters um, per 100 grams and the DK is 230. So just a traditional kind of DK weight. Um, although I would say it's quite plump. So I think you could even go away with like a light worsted with this one. Um, so some patterns uh, that call for light worsted might even be possible in this one. Um, so in case you're um, looking for you know, patterns uh, that you can work with this one, um, you can check DK up to light worsted. Um, speaking of patterns, for the four ply version, I have a bunch of patterns in the preview video that I linked down below. Um, and I really, really hope it might be an inspiration for you. Um, to also inspire you further, because, you know, 
not everyone might be into having just a just a plain black sweater. Um, we also um, did a couple of um, swatches with some of our other bases in case you wanted to work a color work. So um, let me start out with this one. So this one is our uh, Shetland Black Welsh Mountain Yarn in the fall play version in the natural black color called Obsidian together with our oversock in the undyed grey. So with this one there is a slight difference uh, in yardage, so 25 meters per 100 grams I guess. Um, but I think it worked out beautifully still. Um, it's not exactly the same um, makeup spinning wise, but I think it worked really well. And alternatively, uh, what works perfectly together is the Shetland Welsh Mountain with our Shetland Romney fall ply. I mean, 50% is even the same fiber, so we have Shetland in both of these, and they are spun to the exact same specifications, so they are perfect to be com combined with each other. And in this case, we used the dark natural obsidian with our medium beige um, colorway on the Shetland Romney. And this is also um, why we dyed so many um, shades, or not so many, but a few shades on the Shetland Romney fall ply because it goes really well with the Shetland Welsh Mountain in Obsidian. So this one, for example, is an older colorway. I think it might have been mahogany, not really sure, but just to show you that even with a lower contrast and uh, it works really well because the the black of Obsidian is so dark, it really shows even some darker colorways quite well. So yeah, I just wanted to show these little examples to you um, so you can see how it works in a color work. Of course, it works also the other way around so you can use um, the Shetland Welsh Mountain as a contrasting color. Um, but yeah, either way it works. Um, here are also, I just had them laying around so I wanted to show them as well. These are the Einemits by Melody Hoffman um, of Be Mandarins. And I show them more in depth in um, the dedicated preview video of this yarn. But, um, come on camera. But um, this is also combined with the Shetland Romney fall ply, which is why I wanted to show it to you. This is the fall ply version of Shetland Welsh Mountain and um, Shetland Romney fall ply. So yeah, lots of options, I guess. Um, I'm really happy to bring back this yarn because last time it was gone in five minutes. I don't even want to say this because I don't want to put pressure on anyone, but it's again a very limited batch because this fiber blend is not too easy to get hold of. So um, I don't have huge amounts of this. I will make everything available at once uh, for this update, so I won't try and uh, keep it for another update. I will just make everything available at once. And um, yeah, this is the comeback of our first natural black yarn that we ever made. And I could not be happy about it. So yeah, um, as mentioned, there is a whole video about it, so I'm not going to ramble anymore uh, to not keep this episode for too long. Um, but there is a whole video about this space, and as someone who just loves black, as you might have seen if you watch my videos uh, more often, um, this yarn has a special place in my heart, and I'm definitely going to keep a few skeins of this one for myself. I'm going to be very selfish. <laughs> So yeah, that was everything uh, about the September collection preview. Um, as mentioned, the collection will go live on September 29th at 8 p.m. CET, as always. Um, and yeah, if there are any questions, um, feel free to email me at hello at woolentwine.com and I'm going to do my best to reply to you as soon as I can. We will uh, start shipping or start packing either on Sunday afternoon or on the Monday after the shop update. Um, so in case you end up ordering um, 
um, more than one thing, I will need to ask you to um, email me um, with your order numbers and um, yeah, then I can combine the shipping for you. Okay, the light keeps going really crazy, so I'm, I guess I'm gonna wrap this up now quickly. I hope you're gonna love the collection as much as I do. Thank you so much to all the makers who contribute to the September box and yeah, I hope you're gonna love this and have a lovely weekend. Bye! Mm -hmm.